only surviving soda fountain slash luncheonette in New York City. And we hear this a lot from uh, customers that come in and say, my gosh, I haven't seen a place like this in years. But when I was growing up, we had a place like this right by my house. We used to hang out there, whatever. But every neighborhood had several of these, and you couldn't go more than two or three blocks without finding one. Well, slowly but surely, uh, they've all disappeared. And we are the last authentic original. We've been in business for 91 years, same location, doing the same thing, and we do things the old-fashioned way. I guess it was about 10 years ago, there was a big blackout. And that next morning, we came in to work. My whole staff came in. So we had the blackout going, the power outage going, and we were able to serve coffee. And people were astounded that we had coffee. We had a line, we ended up on, on Channel 5 TV in New York. We ended up with a line halfway up 83rd Street because we had coffee, why? because we don't depend on electricity for our coffee. The way you see the store today is the way it's been since 1948. We have a few little upgrades here and there, but we have our, our milkshake machine. It's been here since 1940. We have three of them. Our, our coffee urns have been here since 1948 as well. The soda fountain, all that, 1948. It's getting harder and harder to fix them, learned quite a bit about fixing them yourself, right? We do it the original way when Coca-Cola was created. We pump the syrup into the glass with the ice, and then we manually add seltzer and mix it. And then you have your Coke. That's the way it was originally created. The CO2 machine, the, the seltzer machine, is still Coca-Cola's responsibility to fix. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I, I end up fixing it. So let me tell you what else makes this a special place for a neighborhood. Let's just say uh, a young family moves into the area and they have a couple of kids. We run tabs for the kids. You can't do that in, let's say, national chain businesses. Right, of course. You only can do it in a neighborhood style place. They, they come in and they pay off the tab. But meanwhile, they feel good that the kids can buy, can buy after school, have a bite to eat, drink, maybe with their friends or whatever. So and so is going to come by for my keys. Can you take care of giving them? Sure, no problem. I've been doing that for years, but there's something to be said about this kind of environment that's Absolutely. disappearing. Especially in New York City. Where Especially in New York come, City. And they move from a place where they have a real, you know, they know yes. everybody in their town. Yes. It's very overwhelming sometimes for them to come here and feel like everything, you know, every place you're anonymous and every place is austere and unapproachable. Mm -hmm. And you can actually have a neighbor, neighborhood spot make you feel at home. Absolutely. And, you know, not everybody is a stranger in your neighborhood. There mm -hmm. are actually, you know, places like this that you can come and have a relationship. First break was uh, Three Days of the Condor back in the early 70s with Robert Redford and Faye Dunaway. And it, it was a it was, it was a good movie then, and it's still a good movie, and very current today. Uh, we're at the 10 minute mark, right into the beginning of the movie, he comes here for lunch. But we've also done the Nanny Diaries with Scarlett Johansson, yeah. and we recently did uh, Fading Gigolo, with, uh, it was a John Turturro film with Woody Allen. And I got a cameo speaking part in it, which was, which was terrific. I thought they were just tossing me a bone and everything, but they That's insisted great. that I be in the movie. Oh, I love that. And I was, able, I was trying to entice this young French mademoiselle to have a chocolate egg cream. And for a while there, before everybody had a little Google machine in their pocket, uh -huh. I would say to people, if you could tell me what OPS stands for, I'm buying you lunch. Over the years, only one person knew exactly what it was. Every, everybody could get Office of Price. Nobody could get Stabilization. So in any case, that's what it was. Oh, it was Office of Price Stabilization. Interesting piece of uh, yeah. Americana. Yeah. A little I history like there. That. Yeah. I love it. I'm sure you noticed it on the way in. We have a, a tremendous collection of Coca-Cola bottles. Mm -hmm. And people in the neighborhood love this. Some come in, you know, that, that tell me this all the time. Other people, who I'm not familiar with as customers, they'll go away someplace. Maybe a foreign country, maybe uh, to Tennessee or California, whatever. And they come back with a, and they've come back with a bottle. 
and they say, we, we found this, Can, would you like it to add it to your collection? And it's like, sure. And they, and they basically wait for me to put it in the window or put it on display. You get excited about it at the event. And it's nice, but keep in mind, if somebody brings them back a bottle from Egypt or a bottle from Taiwan or wherever they may travel, yeah. they've actually thought about it yeah. and brought it through customs, brought it through security, put it in their suitcase, whatever the case may be. I, I, I appreciate that. That's really yeah. special. The day of 9-11, we were so busy. They came here because of that comfort feeling. Yes. That, that stability they felt, you know, the comfortable, the comfort food, the comfort this, the, they needed it to feel some level of comfort after the devastation and everything. Yeah. And um, we realized that we were actually playing a really important role in, in these people's lives. So, Your favorite milkshake is vanilla? That's mine, vanilla. I, I get mocked for my friends and everything that because I only like vanilla. Well, it is what it is. It is I like the milk. Popular. It's still the most popular flavor of ice cream in America. And um, I like it. But uh, yeah, we have a great milkshake. It's been rated one of the best milkshakes in America. And rated number one in New York by CBS TV and the AAA and USA Today. Number four, number five in America. By the way, our coffee ice cream and our coffee syrup are dynamic. They're great. In the early 90s, the New York Times did an article about them and talked about the coffee experiences in different places. But the last two paragraphs said, but if you want a real coffee experience, you need to go to the Lexington candy shop and order a coffee milkshake. And the other thing is, you can't find coffee syrup that easily any place. We make our own. We make our own chocolate syrup. We make our own coffee syrup. And we make our own blend of vanilla and strawberry uh, syrup. And have these recipes been in existence for yes. years and years? And yes. Years? They're up here. They're up in your head. They're not written down any place. And, so. and they've been used since the beginning or very close to the mm -hmm. beginning? Mm -hmm.